two, one, and we're live. Good evening. This is the East Aurora Board of Education uh, board meeting for Tuesday, May 19th of 2020. I want to advise everyone again that as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with Executive Order 202.1, members of the public will not be permitted to attend the board meeting in person, and members of the Board of Education are attending the meeting remotely via Google Meet. <clears throat> the meeting can be viewed on our live stream on uh, today's date at our uh, www.eastauroraschools.org. There's a lot a link there to a BOE MTG Live uh, or on the link on our main district webpage. In addition, the meeting will be recorded and transcribed at a later date. We ask that comments or statements that we would like to have read during the visitor comments be emailed to the BOE at eak12.org email address prior to 6.45 today. And uh, I will read those comments comments during visitor can address them appropriately uh, at that time. I'm going to call the uh, meeting to order and ask that we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and it is only for liberty and justice for all. May I have a motion to enter executive session to discuss the matters related to four particular students, as well as a matter related to a particular employee? So moved. So moved. moved by John, seconded by Kim. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carried seven zero. We are leaving this and then going to executive session. Thank you. 
Thank you.
Good evening. This is the uh, May 19th, Tuesday, May 19th, 2020 Board of Education meeting for the East Aurora School District. Uh, I remind everyone that as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with Executive Order 202.1, members of the public are not permitted to attend the board meeting in person and members of the Board of Education are attending the meeting remotely via Google Meet. This meeting can be viewed via live stream this evening at uh, www.eastroraschools.org, B O E M T G, for Board of Education Meeting Live, L I V E, or via the link on our main district webpage. 
In addition, the meeting is re being recorded and will be transcribed at a later date and posted on our website. Uh, I did ask in a, uh, when we started the meeting at six o'clock that any comments or statements that you would like to make that ordinarily occur during visitor comments to please email them to our Board of Education uh, email address at boe at eak12.org prior to 6.45. We did receive one comment, which we'll address later this evening. But if anyone else had another one to send, if they would send that in now. Uh, and then our, uh, we'll address that during the appropriate time during the meeting. We are returning from executive session where the board discussed uh, matters related to four particular students and a matter related to a particular employee. Uh, Mr. Russ, we're back at it again. Are there any agenda changes? Uh, no. All right, then we are moving on to superintendent's comments. Okay, uh, yeah, I have a few. Um, yeah, just like to give you an update on how things are going. Um, I think most of you have received the notice that um, the last day for um, instruction will be June 12th um, for our students. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we're well into phase two of our uh, educational plan. And just so we're, again, aware there were three, three requirements. One was for an educa our educational plan, one for food service, and also one for child care. Um, so we've submitted those to the state and we were required to submit an update uh, recently on our educational plan, and I'm very happy to say ours was, um, I think, one of the very few that was accepted the first time around. Uh, so I'd like to thank everybody that was involved in that um, in terms of their input. Uh, all the administrators, uh, Mark and Jerome, kind of took the lead on that and gathered information from all the principals and assistant principals. And, uh, yep, we're uh, well on our way. Uh, the five-week mark is this Friday, uh, so we're halfway um through the semester, but now we realize we're only going to have three weeks after that. So because of the announcement, it's, you know, like everything, it changes day to day. Um, but things are moving along nicely. You know, they've, they've adjusted. Um, gosh, throughout the entire process, I've had a chance. I'm meeting with all of my departments and grade levels. And so I've been able to get through a number of those meetings. And I think what I've heard um, come out of it and from a really positive piece is that um, they've gotten to know each other better because they've had more time to spend together. They're, when they're in their classrooms on a regular day, they're pretty busy and they have um, kind of um, scheduled times to meet and to work together. Now they're meeting throughout the day, pretty much throughout the week as they make adjustments to their instructional models. Uh, and so it's been very positive from that perspective. Uh, and I think one thing that they've also realized is that the instruction is kind of happening from the morning till the evening because every student has their own kind of need uh, and, and is on their own schedule. So many of it will, they'll, they'll start, you know, eight or 9 a.m. Excuse me, they'll, they'll work through um, the day and then another group comes on in the afternoon and then another group comes on in the evening after dinner uh, because some kids, um, especially at the elementary level, are going to daycare throughout the day. So then when they return home in, in the evening with their parents, they start their learning, you know, at, at six o'clock. So they'll be asking questions between six and nine p.m. And also, there's questions between nine and three uh, a.m. into p.m. So it's kind of continuous throughout the day, and so they're adapting to that. And uh, I think they're doing a really great job responding. I think you know we're, we're preparing to put our task force together um, for the reopening of school in September. And I know some of the board members have sent me. Um, that they were interested in serving on that. So I'll be letting you know about when we're going to get going. Um, and our teachers are, are the last day for our teachers. And I'll be sending this out to the entire staff to let them know what their last day of, of the year is. It's different for various groups, but for the teachers, it's June 17th. So we have three days between um, the 12th and the 17th that we can dedicate to professional development. And part of that will be just the initial talk about what does September look like. And from that point, we'll be gathering the rest of the task force together to work on it over the next several months. So we'll be working um, through the rest of June, July, and into August as we prepare to open school in September. A lot of that will depend on how um, the, the virus progresses. You know, we're seeing some positive data right now. I don't want to overemphasize that. I know we all need to still remain, you know, socially distant, washing our hands, wearing masks, and all those important things need to continue to happen, um, which is really a challenge for us. I know it is. 
Um, but that's really important because I think we'll see that data improve if we continue to be committed to to um, eradicating this, this this virus and and hopefully moving in a in a much more positive direction over the next couple of months. Um, and so, do I think it's going to be uh, 1,800 students coming back on September 5th? Probably not. It's going to be some modification of that, and that's what we're going to have to work on over the next couple of months uh, to to put the best plan together uh, possible. So, Brian, yeah, just with, with the end of of school being June 12th, I, I, that sort of lobs off you know exam schedules and and that stuff. It, have all the kids been notified about what what the expectation is come you know that end of June, that middle of June date? Yeah, and that's you know primarily at the high school. And yes, they they basically have eliminated exams. You know, I think they're doing some assessments within the within the materials that they're presenting, but there won't be any final exam schedule or anything like that. No. Okay. And so again, I think you know the programming. Um, you know, it's it's a work in progress. And and one thing I think I've also noticed is that there's a lot of positive energy um, for our teachers, but they're also really tired. You know, many of them that have been here for a long time have said, I've, I've never worked harder in my career to make this work, you know, so I know they're really devoting a lot of time and attention and energy. Uh, and it's certainly like, again, uh, day to day, it's a work in progress. But I think we've done um, the absolute best that we could have. And so um, the other piece is the meal. Our meal program is, is really working well. And I think there may be some misunderstanding about how the program is funded. So I thought I would share that at this time as well. Um, we're, we're being funded through uh, federal and state grants. Um, part of our requirement was we were required to offer um, food um, meals to our, our actually any, any child between the age of newborn to 18 years of age. Um, we're, you know, we're required to put that offer out, which we did. Uh, we decided to do an opt out. So we offered it to everyone. Uh, and then even people that do not attend our schools, but have children between those ages are eligible. And so we're, and we're required to fulfill that need if they do so request those meals. And so, um, like I said, our food service workers have worked incredibly, um, uh, diligently, it's really amazing to watch that process about how productive they are because we're we're delivering just under twenty five thousand meals a week, and again, this is based on the requirement um, from the state, and then the funding comes from state and federal grants. There's no local uh, dollars that are put towards this program, so I just wanted to clarify that. And so I think it's going really well, and we've received um, numerous. Um, I mean. I'll say hundreds of compliments and thank yous um, from people in our community in regard to the program. Uh, so it, it has been really successful. Our, our teacher aides are the people that deliver the food uh, along with our bus drivers. And then our food service uh, workers are the ones that prepare all the meals uh, for delivery. Jim, uh, Brian, I know you said that that was going to continue through um, the end of June. Is there any expectation that that would need to continue in the summer months? There's a discussion right now, and, and, and the governor has not told us if we'll need to do this over the summer or not, um, but it is in consideration. You know, they haven't given us any. So right now it's going through the 26th of June. Uh, that will be our last delivery date. And then hopefully between now and we're hoping the end of this month, we'll know if that will continue along with notice of summer school. Um, one thing for summer school that we're most focused on is our students with, with special needs to provide them with additional support that, you know, I think of, of all the issues that we face instructionally, I would say um, the delivery of those individualized and personalized attentions are, 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 are probably our greatest need and our greatest challenge. And so therefore we want to hopefully be able to offer some type of content, compensatory services over the summer and even into the fall if necessary to make up for those, those, those losses. And so that's going to be determined by, um, you know, the team, the special ed teacher, along with the gen ed teacher and the committee on special education will will take a look at those um, those case by case to see which students are in, in greatest need. So, yeah. Yep. Can I just jump in a, on a, sure. the scope of our lunch delivery today? Somebody, we don't know who, received our 225,000th 
225, yeah, 225,000th meal. And we're on track to hit 360,000 by June 26. So Did that's, they get a special that's what prize we, with that meal. <laughs> we don't know who, because somebody got it. Um, <laughs> but just in terms of the scope, we, um, last Tuesday we hit our 200,000th meal. And by the time we're done, we'll have ordered and delivered 360,000 meals to our community. Wow. And, and, and I think you know, what has happened too is that many people who do not need, uh, receive the service during the typical school year, so many things have changed for families within our community. Um, we're just we're just hearing a lot of, of thanks from from so many families uh, because their circumstances have changed. So it's a, it's been a really positive thing, very 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 positive. Um, and so, like I mentioned, the task force will be will be working with the. Uh, with the, uh, the teachers to, to formulate um, an initial plan. And then I'll be sending out invitations to the other members so that we can get together probably somewhere in the, near the, um, the second half of June uh, into um, July and August, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Um, let's see. Uh, I wanted to show you this, you know, the, the voting is, is so different this year because we're sending out a little over 10,000 ballots um, to our, our, um, these are registered voters, but it's also to anyone who is eligible to vote. So that's that's a little bit of the, the, the sticking point. So we are notifying them that if there is a member who receives this, but there's also another eligible voter, say a student that came home, that's come home from college, they would be eligible, but not necessarily registered. All they need to do is call my office and we'll send them the ballot. Um, so we're putting that out. And so, as you can imagine, this is a, <laughs> an interesting process. And so I want to just thank Jackie and Sue Kramer um, for putting all of this together. So here's the envelope goes in another envelope and this thing goes in another envelope and this one goes in all in one big envelope. So <laughs> it's a lot of pieces <laughs> to make sure that this goes the right way. Um, but they've done a really excellent job setting up all of this stuff. Here's the actual ballot, which is, is like an official ballot that we would normally use. And what we're hoping to do is... Hold it up, Brian. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Thanks. Yep. So that's what the ballot looks like. It, it's pretty easy to read. Um, there's three candidates for board um, this year, and then just one proposition, which is it, which is the, the budget vote itself. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're hoping to get these out. Um, they might start moving uh, this, this week, Thursday, um, so that people get them in plenty of time to to read through it and send them back in the mail so that we get them by June 9th at 5 p.m. because that is the cutoff. So we have to receive them by that on that date by that time. And so um, let's just see. So, uh, yeah, so that's all been put together. And again, Hi. yes. Excuse me, if I may, I think we spoke about this last time. So it has to be received. So even if they're postmarked yeah. um, after or June 9th or before, those aren't going to be, if it comes down to those will not be counted or just, I understand. That's, that's my understanding. Ja Jackie, are you there? Um, yes. Yeah, any, any comment on that at all? Um, yes. Our school attorney told us that the five deadline is the deadline. If you extend that by accepting a postmark, when do you stop accepting them? The day after three days a week, she said we must stand by the 5 p.m. on June 9th. Jackie, I have, I have two questions. Who's counting the votes? And secondly, when are the ballots actually going to be mailed? We're hoping that the ballots will be mailed out later this week. And when they come back, we are going to, we won't be counting them. They will be opened in the district separated from the ballot envelope and the ballot will be in a separate box. And then hopefully the next day we will go to the board of elections and they will run them through their high speed tabulator and give us the results of our vote. And did we get instructions in terms of how we are supposed to maintain these ballots because we're opening them? Did our attorney tell us how we're supposed to do that so that they're kept in, you know, a certain spot so that we don't have any issues with in terms of the, the votes being counted? Um, no, but I, I would say that we will, that will be done as we've done them in the past. There will be more than one person and they will open. And as I said, put the ballot envelope in one area and the ballot will be thrown in another box. 
and, and then they, they would be secured. And we have a, a vault in my office um, until we move them to, um, yeah, until they are moved until, yeah, exactly. Okay, that's what and I want to know. So Jackie was able to um, get us on the docket to have them counted by their high speed tabulator, <clears throat> uh, which, and we don't know, you know, we, we may get a thousand, we may get 10,000, right? We, we just don't know right now. And so taking it down to their, their, because um, we talked to them about folding the ballots and things like that. And they've given us instructions that that's all possible. If you're going to use the high speed tabulator should be able to, to work through those in, in a matter of, I would think of, they do about 300 per minute. They count about 300 per minute. So it's, it's, um, and they're doing that for all the school districts in the. In the if they choose to, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some people are, are thinking about hand counting. Um, you know, we, we decided we didn't want to do that. We thought about getting our own machine, mm -hmm. but it, it takes about 300 an hour. So, again, it, it, you know, we just thought it was was better to be able to, to lock them up and then transport them the next day to uh, Board of Elections and let them tabulate them for us. No, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yep. Anybody so, have any questions about that process before we before Brian moves on? And then um, I just wanted to any any other questions at all? Everybody's okay. Um, oh. And then I just wanted to thank um, you know our PTO. Um, um, we've been working with the PTO. I've been meet, I, I've met with them. Um, geez, about three three times um, myself this month uh, because they were interested in in trying to reach out to our community. Um, you know, and so they've done some things like for the people who are delivering our 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 our, our, our meals, they are providing coffee and, and fruit and donuts for them uh, each morning. Um, they've sent out a, a thank you, a small gift card to our our staff members, all the not only the not only the teachers but the support staff and and our um, our secretaries, administrators, those types of things. Uh, and then they've also created a, a, a weekly contest where. Um, they're asking students to send in pictures based around a theme. Each week, it's different. Um, this this week's theme is um, Jess. What's this theme, week's theme? I'm drawing a blank. Is it get outside or get up and move? Get up and move. Yeah. So it's an uh, any kind of exercise, any kind of hiking, any kind of exercise you're doing. Send a picture in, and then they they select the uh, they just randomly select the winner each each week from the. Uh, Parkdale, the middle school and the high school, and then they give them a $25 uh, East Aurora Chamber of Commerce gift card. Uh, so they've been doing a lot of that outreach. And then they have a bunch of things. Our high school PTO <clears throat> has, a, has a number of things that they have planned. I think Bill's going to speak about it in, in a little bit more detail later on. Uh, but they've been working really, really hard and done a great job. And we're hoping to uh, start that process in the very near future. Uh, we've been, we had a hit, got hit with a few delays this week. We had a a rain delay yesterday, and then unfortunately, because of the train derailment, we couldn't move uh, the first surprise forward today. So, um, kind of unfortunate, but we're hoping later in the week we'll be able to do that. And then there's a few other things that they have up their sleeve that we're excited about, and and they've been, like I said, working really hard to make that happen. So, I just want to thank them for all of their uh, excellent work. I mean, it's just um, typical. Uh, the PTO is always uh, a huge supporter of the district, and we're grateful for their work. Um, and I think uh, that's it. All right. Thank you, Brian. We're moving on to board presidents and board members' comments and committee reports. I, I just want to thank the PTO also. I, I uh, They never s fail to amaze us, I think, in terms of just their outreach and their ability to connect um, and provide, you know, um, volunteers and, 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 acknowledgements to all of our teachers and staff and just the efforts that they're being, uh, that they're putting forth with respect to, you know, trying to make things exciting and memorable for our seniors. But it, it, they touch absolutely every one of our um, teachers and staff and students' lives in some way. And and I, I think sometimes we forget all they do in the background, but this pandemic has really demonstrated how much our PTOs really mean to us because they really have stepped up and made the sense of community be so strong here in East Aurora. And I, I just think we, we can't thank them enough that I know it's a tremendous amount of time that they put forward and, you know, everybody's dealing with their own family issues and their work issues and whatnot. While this, this pandemic is ongoing, but those folks are really ought to be commended. They really do a phenomenal job for us throughout the year. 
And in this time of crisis, they really have stepped up. And so on behalf of the board, I hope that that somebody there is listening and, and can extend our thanks to them because um, it, it's impressive. Yeah, I will, I will do that. Uh, that's all. I didn't have a committee report in the last couple of weeks that we met, but um, I'll go down the list then. Jessica, Armbrust, anything? I would just like to say thank you to Brian and the administrators, the teachers, um, as we keep going down this long road and now we're looking at the end of the school year. Um, I, as a parent, am incredibly grateful for the steady communication and I'm starting to recognize um, how odd the summer is going to be. You all have done an amazing job of providing a sense of normalcy and giving families and students something to focus on and look forward to. Um, so thank you. Your efforts are phenomenal. Um, and it, it's, it's been an odd time, but I'm, I'm truly grateful for all the work that you've all done. Thank you. It's really been a smooth process as a result of them. Uh, Terry Weiler, anything? No, I'm good. Thank you. All right. John Segetti. No, no comments. Just did what Jessica just said. Unbelievable job. Judy Malice. I do. Um, Thank you so much to the teachers for all they're doing. And I, I was at Fish this morning, and I, I just have to mention that the we are starting to see some food that is not being used, being brought into Fish. So it's definitely being used because we're seeing twice the number of clients. That's one thing. The second thing I wanted to mention, I wanted to give a shout out to a particular teacher, Brian Hill. Um, my fourth grade grandson struggles dramatically in school. And Brian, on, on with him the other day, um, he's only met with him twice. But the fact that he could get my little grandson to focus for a full hour um, was just absolutely amazing. He did a wonderful job. And I, I just wanted to shout out to him because he's, he's one of many. I, I understand that. But I, I was just thrilled that he took the time. And I'm also very pleased to hear that we're considering summer school for the kids that are at risk because they will uh, regress. And I've already seen regression and um, here. And just glad to see that we have that many committed teachers willing to make that effort. And he was just terrific. And I just wanted to shout out to him. Thank you. Kim Daniel. Uh, I just want to echo what everyone else has been saying. Thank you so much to everyone in the district for all their efforts um, in such a challenging time. So thank you. Mr. Brunson. Well, just uh, to add to uh, the the uh, good work, uh, the comments about good work that's being done, I'm really appreciative of uh, the updates that we've been receiving from uh, our attorneys uh, during this time, uh, keeping us uh, well informed about uh, every circumstance as it comes along. And locally, I'm, I'm very um, grateful to the Chamber of Commerce for the work that they've done to help keep uh, all of our uh, neighbors informed about uh, the process uh, as it moves forward. And uh, I hope we are going to renew our membership. I think we are members in the Chamber of Commerce as a school district. I know we are. Uh, and I hope we uh, renew our membership because, uh, uh, because I think they're doing a terrific job associated with that. And then just finally, uh, a, th a thank you to uh, to John and to Jessica for uh, con con agreeing to continue for an additional three years on the Board of Education. Uh, their uh, their efforts are are terrific, and uh, uh, and I uh, uh, appreciate being able to work with you folks, and and appreciate that you've been willing to devote the amount of time that it's going to take over the next three years to continue the good work that we've started. So congratulations to both of you. Thank you. And Mr. Yeah, wait, thank wait. you for running as well. Yeah, can I add one comment there? Dan, how long have you been doing this for? I've been here for three years, my friend. Well, right, right back at you 20 times. Well, qu quantity and quality are two different things. <laughs> Dan, you are walking <laughs> <over> there, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> you read Thanks. everything that comes across that table, my friend. Nice work. Thanks for setting a good example, Dan. Thank and, you. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. And, and Brian, I, I know you and, and Judy mentioned the, the effort that our teachers have been making and how this has turned from a you know, a school day job into a 24 hour job. And I don't think it goes unnoticed by any of us that are sitting here in this room that that 
extends not just from our teachers, but it also goes up the chain to our administrators and it goes up to you. I know that in this time that every one of you is working 24 hours a day, sometimes, you know, uh, waking up in the middle of the night and I'm sure, you know, having having the students of East Aurora and the community on your mind. So we appreciate that that, 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 that this has caused, you know, extra time for everybody in the district, staff, teachers, students uh, in included, but thank you all for your efforts because it, it certainly is, um, it's, it's, it's not gone unnoticed, but I, I can't say that there's an end in sight uh, quite just yet. All right. Thank you. Moving on to administrator's comments. Can, uh, I, can I jump in for one second? I forgot to mention the hashtag uh, 1EA sale okay. for uh, the gear. Um, it's going really well. We, we didn't have any idea. Mark, do you know how many sales we have now at this point? Do you have any idea? Nope. You're, I think you're muted, Mark. What? I, I don't, but it was uh, close to 200 sales just after the first two days. Uh, it's a flash sale that goes for one week. And if, if I can do this, you'll be able to see what the logo looks like. Yeah. Yes, perfect. Um, yeah. So I, I think you, you've you so, all received that notice I, that I sent out earlier in the week. And, you know, we, we thought it would be uh, a nice thing to do for the community. And and then um, the, uh, the proceeds are going to go to the Rural Outreach Center. Uh, you know, we didn't know what we would sell, but it seems like it's really taken off. And obviously the community is interested. So uh, great job, Mark. And also the book. Um, Mark was able to um, uh, obtain uh, about 2,000 um, brand new books that we're going to be sending out to our, our students. It's really more K to six, Mark, or K to four. Probably yeah. K to four. There's a couple yeah, four lower middle, middle school as well. So we're going to be delivering that with our, our meals. And so uh, kids will get one or two new books. And uh, so we're really excited about that as well. That's a donation from the teacher's desk. Uh, which is a store that provides uh, free supplies to teachers uh, throughout the school year. Uh, since they're closed, they're trying to do something different and they've come up with this book donation. And so we're really grateful to have that partnership. And thank you, Mark, for coordinating and making it happen. Great. Just if I could just jump on the sale, it, it is a one week only flash sale. So next Tuesday, the store closes for good. So if you or anyone you know, uh, and it's not district wide, it's community wide. So anyone in the community, obviously that has East Aurora pride or even folks outside the community. Um, but if you miss Tuesday's deadline, that ship sails and uh, the store does not reopen. So um, there you go. Mark, who, who did the logo? Um, I'm going to bounce that to Matt Lybrock. He was working with some of the people that do our athletic um, gear. So maybe Matt can jump in and tell us. Sure. So, we went back and forth with uh, BSN Sports, and it was actually Chris Casalini has a contact there, and he did a lot of the legwork here to, to get the store going and and uh, report back to, to Mark and myself uh, kind of as the middleman in the process to finalize the, the store that you guys see online right now. So so the design of the logo came from them? Uh, uh, back collaborative. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yep, thanks. Mm -hmm. Collaborative. It was they... They, many communities are doing a uh, community strong, so a Lancaster strong, a Clarence strong. Um, we had kind of already adopted the 1EA motto and also we're East Aurora, so we have to be different. Um, so we we worked with them and we kind of told them our inspiration would be the, the One Buffalo logo um, that our professional sports team uses. And we went back and forth um, with someone who's far better at graphic arts than we are, um, but there was a back and forth tinkering that happened there. Um, so, uh, collaborative, but, but one of their artists actually dialed it in and, and made it look as nice as it does. Yeah. It looks, it looks great. Yeah. Mark's free and, hand and then that logo, what, Mark's hand sketch. You don't want to see my initial sketch. sketch but. Really started it all, so. <laughs> well, and, and, and the, and the, actually the one EA, um, was, was first developed through our values and vision committee. That's where the one EA concept came. And that's where we put the hashtag one EA on all of our correspondence. And that's what kind of led us to designing the, uh, the the gear that way as well. So for anyone who's listening, uh, we have about a half dozen people or for anyone here or who wants to share it, right on the top of the main district webpage is the link. Uh, feel free to send that link to yourself or anyone else. But again, Tuesday is going to be your hard deadline a week from today. All right. That's it. Thank you. Um, moving on to administrator's comments. Um, Jessica Lyons. 
I do not have anything this evening. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Brown. Hi there, same as Jess, just a, a lot of what you have already mentioned. Um, you know, everyone's working hard and things are going as well as they can be. Thank you. Steady, though. steady as they go. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Leibrock. Uh, I guess nothing to report from the middle school or, or Parkdale and uh, athletically, just as the high school PTO is getting ready to honor the seniors, we do have a plan in place for our senior athletes. So hopefully that'll be out uh, in the next week or two and uh, we can celebrate along with the rest of the high school. Wonderful. Thank you. Mr. Roberts. Good evening, everyone. Hopefully my, uh, my sound is functioning well here tonight. Um, so we're going to send out uh, an update to our students and our parents at the end of this week, but I can give you a, a preview of some of the topics and obviously a busy time of year at the high school in May, June. Um, just so you know, uh, our, our academic awards, we typically have a rather large ceremony the end of May, and we are going to um, all of those award winners uh, within the next edition of the Challenger. Um, those are college academic awards plus the East Aurora High School Department Awards. Uh, the academic awards traditionally going to juniors and the department awards going to our senior class. So those will be publicized within the Challenger and we're thankful to, to be able to grab a page within the Challenger to um, showcase those uh, successes. Our National Honor Society ceremony, which traditionally takes place in the spring, will take place in the fall. And that's something that um, all high schools that I'm in, in um, conversations with, uh, everyone has is, is moved their National Honor Society induction fall. Um, community service for the class of 2020, we have um, exempt them from the community service requirement for graduation. And then we'll reevaluate for the class of 2021 fall. And we're in the uh, process of coordinating distribution of, um, of our yearbooks, our caps and gowns, and some other special surprises for our senior class and our um, underclass uh, uh, ninth to 11th graders. And that schedule will come out at the end of this week. Uh, but that'll start uh, June 9th with our seniors and then June 15th, 16th, and 17th with our underclass students. And so we'll put that schedule together and, and communicate that to our families. And then we've had... Now, I think three or four meetings with our graduation planning committee. Uh, we met uh, today, most recently, and really excited about the um, live graduation that will take place on our campus um, on the um, originally scheduled June 27th at 1 p.m. And the students are coming up with a, a beautiful program and uh, looking forward to sharing the uh, specifics of that with our seniors and parents, again, as that comes together in, in the next week or so. Uh, I'd like to echo what, what many of you have said and, and thank our PTO uh, for their support. Uh, we have um, just starting to uh, present some of the, the, the uh, long awaited surprises and uh, many of these things took many weeks to uh, to put together as as we'll see um, Thursday of this week and then again on June 9th and again at graduation and then that's complemented by our senior class our government and our spirit club doing a number of things mainly around social media focusing on our our seniors and their um, choices of college their memories of East Aurora High School etc so if you're not following us, on Twitter or Facebook, I, I would highly recommend it. Um, it's, it our class uh, classes have done a really nice job in highlighting the successes of, of our seniors, and that'll continue all the way up to graduation. So, um, lots going on. Sorry, a little long-winded, um, but uh, we've got a great team 
together, um, working towards some some pretty exciting things here. Uh, all a little different than than the traditions, but but I, I'm really proud of of what the end results will be. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. It does sound like it's going to be at least uh, special and memorable for these for these kids. Thank you. Mr. Corella, anything to add? Oh, Bill, you did a really nice job at uh, uh, taking all of my ideas. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, we've been, uh, again, just to reiterate what Mr. Roberts has is, is said, we, we've turned a lot of our attention to our senior recognitions and uh, I'm excited to share one of the, the projects we've been working on for the for the past week or two uh, in a video format that we'll, we should share this week on social media. Uh, a, a huge thank you to, to Alka Modgill and our class exec board. Uh, we've been working closely with them to highlight seniors. We've been doing three seniors a day on our Twitter just to show, you know, what colleges they've been going to and, and uh, uh, what their plans are. But it's been fun to watch. Of, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of neat. And then we've also been working with our student government uh, with Mr. Heisner. Uh, big thank you to him and, and, and those folks at student government. And we're doing senior memories. So we, we've kind of branched our, our ideas uh, across the board to just highlight different ways for seniors to, to feel highlighted and recognized. Um, and then that's going to kind of culminate into a really nice video that we're going to share uh, either today or tomorrow. Uh, that I, I think everyone will enjoy. So stay tuned on our Twitter page to see. Uh, we got almost 80% of our seniors to, to be included in that memory. So uh, slowly but surely, you'll start to see those memories trickle through and, and a nice way to highlight an amazing class of 2020 and, and some really, really uh, amazing seniors. So we're excited to, to really uh, start our focus on that as well. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Membretti, anything this evening? No, other than I, I don't know if we mentioned it, I apologize. Uh, for that 1EA sale, uh, all of the proceeds are going to our Rural Outreach Center. So um, not only are you showing your community pride, but you'll be helping your neighbors, some of whom have been hit hardest by this pandemic. Thank you very much. Uh, Joanne George, anything this evening? Just... I'm good. Okay, thank you. We'll hear from you later on the budget. Uh, Mr. Polakowicz? Yes, just one thing. I, I hope the governor is tuned into YouTube this evening and watching our board meeting. Uh, I would strongly encourage him to uh, approve summer school to to run this summer because we have a lot of students that uh, would definitely need uh, that summer session to get back to where they should be academically. Absolutely. Thanks very much, Jerome. You're welcome. Uh, Rich Clements. Just uh, continued kudos to my team. They never cease to amaze me. Innovative solutions, collaboration, all under duress. Just a great group of people. And I just, I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record here, but they're an amazing group of people. And I'm so proud to, to work with them. Thanks. Uh, Rich, can I ask a, a quick question of you? Uh, the, is Are we intending to uh, collect all of these uh, Chromebook computers uh, back to the district uh, at the end of June? Yes, we are, Mr. Brunson. Good, thank you. Yeah, you know, can I just comment on that? I, I would say, um, again, that so much of this has relied on technology, uh, you know, not only the use of Chromebooks, but all the applications that teachers are using uh, to, to prepare their lessons and deliver the instruction to our students. And so the, the tech department is continuously responding to just needs on a variety of levels. And, uh, and they've done so with really, uh, it's been really quite outstanding and just want to thank them. And same thing for Mary, like we talked about changing report cards and things like that. It, it seems like a simple process, but it's, there are so many layers within the system that need to be adjusted. You know, she has really stepped up to make sure that's happening because again, all of that grading uh, it's, it's just different. It's just different this year. And, and uh, again, she's just done it without any complaints and, and a little bit of trial and error because <laughs> it's just being kind of thrown at her and she's just responding. Uh, it's just with tremendous effort. Yeah, really great. Has there uh, been communication to the students and parents that those Chromebooks will be collected at the one school's I confess I don't know, but um, uh, uh, just make sure that there's something just that if you put it in their mind now, they'll remember to 
keep it handy and where it needs to be and how that's going to get collected at the end of the year. We talked about that, Mary Beth, when we found out the last day was the 12th, we said, okay, what do we, what, when are we going to collect things? And so we, you know, we want to obviously allow them to have the, the materials as long as we can. And then also coordinating it and like it, each school is doing it a little differently, but they'll be okay. getting that message out for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, Mr. Wicks, anything this evening? No, I, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. Did I miss anybody? Oh, right. Uh, moving on to visitors' comments. Um, I received one email this evening from a Janine Zalasco. Um, she had a question that she wanted addressed uh, this evening, and she said, why is there an assistant principal at Parkdale now? Also, more importantly, why is that position filled? But yet the plan is to take away an additional fourth grade teacher for next year at Parkdale. The class sizes have been very large for that class in the past. And I was told next year the classes could be up to 27 kids. To me, it is more important to have smaller class sizes over an additional principal. Uh, Mr. Russ, I know you were going to plan to address it during the budget uh, session that, that this issue is going to come up. But could maybe you could do you know, some preliminary on that. Sure. Um <clears throat> yeah, you know what? Um, it's been a work in progress, and actually, the, the the assistant principal position goes back to our previous this this year's budget. Uh, and so, we talked about that uh, at at the board level about the need for some additional um, administrative support in in a, in, a, in a couple of areas. Uh, <clears throat> and we were starting to move forward with that plan. You know what we've realized now under these circumstances, as as I said in in our last. In our last meeting, the number one priority is to restore that position at Parkdale um, to maintain our class sizes and keep them at a lower level. Uh, so that is our still our top priority. And I've been talking with the administrative team about how do we rework our administrative plan. Uh, you know, we had an idea of adding the assistant principal. Again, if we look at our, and I think maybe one thing I need to do um, in, in an upcoming meeting is show our administrative expenditures over of the last decade. And basically what we'll see is they have been flat. Uh, I, I've dated back to 2008 and, and our expenditure today in 2020 is the same level as it was in 2008. So over that period of time, we've continued to reduce the number of administrators throughout the district and, and our, our spending has been flat. But what we realize now is due to just the increased needs of, of our students um, and the requirements of the state, the current administrative team really um it's it's just not um it's it's just not feasible honestly moving forward so we need to look at it in a different way but what we're planning to do is kind of suspend our original plan um put that on hold and and look um at alternatives uh to providing administrative support um, not only to the principals but also to some of the directors so i'll be disclosing that at a at a future meeting uh, what that looks like, uh, but we will be we won't be moving forward with uh, any additional administrative expenditures as we had originally planned. Yeah. And and um, just so folks sort of understand, when we say that that uh, position for the assistant principal came out of this year's budget, it was the nineteen twenty yeah. school year budget that initiated that change right. um, because we saw that need, and then this pandemic came up, and that's what caused the the change in the being able to add the additional teacher at fourth grade. We, we certainly want to be able to do that. And the issue will be as we move forward through the, I mean, we had hoped we would have the, the governor's cuts um, for tonight's meeting and we don't have those numbers, but we're anticipating additional cuts soon. And then again in June and again in December. And so that necessarily is going to impact um all of you know, all of our all of our buildings and our educational um, structure as we move forward. We're just going to have to see what what, what comes. Of it. Yeah, that that's a great point. The decision to add the assistant principal, which which actually wasn't adding, was just replacing an assistant principal that we had eliminated um, when Mr. Brown was actually promoted to principal. We did not fill his position. It's right. been several years, so we were just um, um, we were just replacing that position that was always there. We just had, hadn't done it for a few years. But the idea of why we've had to hold off on the, the actual teaching position is because of the situation related to the pandemic. It's exactly that. And the uncertainty of what our funding will look like. So it's kind of on hold. But again, it's 
it's our top priority, as I mentioned in our last meeting, to restore that position. Right. May, may I suggest that when we have the presentation on the budget l later in this meeting, that we address the issue of class sizes uh, as they are planned to occur in the budget that we're considering adopting? Sure. Thank you. Sure. All right. Uh, that's all I had for visitors' comments this evening. We're moving on to reports and discussion items, and it is the proposed 2020-21 school district budget. Mr. Ross and Ms. George, you are up. Okay. Um, jo uh, Joanne, is there a, there's not a budget piece, right? You're going, your normal budget report? You're ready for this, right? Would be loser. She might be on mute still. Hang on. Okay. Yes, we're ready for this, Mark. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure. Okay, you're good then. All right. Um, <clears throat> well, here we are. This is the um, proposed uh, budget for the 2020-2021 school year. Uh, so here we go. Again, here's our agenda for this evening. Uh, you know, we're going to take a look quickly at our values and visions and the budget development considerations as we do every meeting. We'll take a look at the tax uh, levy limit calculation. It's something that's updated. Uh, it's actually come down a little bit, and we'll explain why that's happened. Uh, again, we'll look at the levy, the rate, and the equalization update. We'll look at revenues and expenditures. We'll do a quick budget recap, and then we'll take a look at what the proposition is, and we'll see where we go from here. So again, um, all of our decisions have been based around our values and vision. Um, the board's very well aware that we've developed this committee several years ago as we went through the previous financial crisis uh, to help us to refocus. Uh, I think it's been incredibly successful and it's helped us to weather um, a major storm and come out of it, um, I think, much better off. And so again, we continue to use this as kind of the central focus as we develop our budgets. Here are the considerations again. First and foremost, we're committed to the interest and success of our students. We're also committed to exercising good care and judgment in managing the resources uh, that the community entrusts us with. Uh, we're committing uh, to conducting our business openly uh, in, in an objective and professional manner. And that's why we've set up these live streams so that the uh, community can continue to participate. And as always, we're, we're future focused, no matter what issues or problems we're facing, uh, we're, we're focused on the future and, and doing uh, the best we possibly can for our students. So here it is, the tax levy limit calculation. You can see here in the 20, uh, 2020, 2021 school year, the levy um, percentage increase is 5.07. And that is decreased from our last meeting because we received notice from BOCES that they are going to um, um, forego our, our capital payment for this year. And Joanne, can you can you speak to that about the details of that? You know better. Yes. <laughs> Every year, Erie to BOCES, there's a capital component of our um, BOCES budget, and they decided to reduce the capital component for one year. Um, to help during the crisis. So that translates into, there was a $65,000 and change adjustment on the expenditure side. And then it changed our um, capital exclusion for BOCES on the tax levy limit calculation. Um, so the number that changed is the one in yellow, the 1.3 million um, in the previous um, slides, it was 1.4, I believe. So um, when, when did that happen? That just happened uh, Friday. I got notification of that. And then Thank I worked you. on it over the weekend. Thank you. So uh, so that's how these things work. We know we get notice one day and something has to change the next. So Joanne, thank you for calculating that. And you can see that brought down our, our tax levy limit to just over over 5%. Joanne, is there any chance it'll change before the vote? Um, no, no, no that's, that would be the last change. That's the last piece that could um, potentially impact the calculation. All the other um, pieces are set. Thanks. 
So again, here, this is just what we were looking at over as we were forecasting over the last several years. You can see in uh, 1819, we were thinking it was going to come in uh, as we were doing our three year projection around seven and a quarter percent. Last year, we thought it would be somewhere about four and three quarters percent. And we actually came in fairly close to that at, at 5.07 percent. Uh, and so, you know, we look forward to those projections uh, in 21, 22, 22, 23, and 23, 24 are of, of, of some significant decreases and getting this back to a, a place where, which we're much more comfortable. Uh, the community has been very supportive and we're grateful for that. And that's what's helped us to kind of restore programs and also help to write our fiscal, our fiscal ship, which was in, which is in grave situation just a few years ago. So here we are again, this equalization is, is just something that's calculated um, at a later date. And so some of this we don't know. So again, Joanne makes these adjustments as that information becomes available to us. And you can see here, um, which I think is very important is, is the estimated rate. You can see the two arrows at the bottom and that estimated rate is, is projected at just uh, right around 4%, 4.02%. So the rate is coming in and lower than the levy. And so we're, we're pleased with that. Um, and again, um, and that's an estimated rate. And Joanne will make the actual calculation when that information becomes available. We're fairly confident it should be right around that number. So here's our expenditures. And again, um, uh, again, a, a lot of the uh, these have remained the same, uh, the increases or decreases, except for BOCES. Uh, Joanne was saying it's, it's, a, it's a reduction of about $60,000. So that would be in the column of 2020-21 proposed. And it says BOCES of $5,452,247. That's been reduced by a little over $60,000. And here's our revenues. Again, we've been looking at these for several months. Um, and the revenues, um, again, have been pretty much the same. Uh, the one thing that Joanne did, did change is you can see there's an adjustment in the uh, tax sales tax. So she brought down that proposed number from $2.1 million to $2,065,356. Uh, again, um, just due to the fact that we realize that we're going to be receiving less sales tax for this quarter, while the other previous quarters have come in beyond our expectation, we still feel that this is a, a much more conservative estimate on what sales tax will end up at the end of the year. So here's the recap for the proposed budget. Um, our current budget is $36,331,854. Our tentative increase is $1,839,873 for a new proposed budget of $38,171,727. No, Again, the, the levy increase of 5.07 and a rate increase of 4.02. And the estimated approximate tax impact on a true value home of $100,000 is about $58. So um, here it is. This is what the proposition will look like. I showed you the ballot earlier. Uh, in addition to this being on, on the ballot, there'll be the, the uh, three candidates uh, for uh, board elections. Um, I'm glad that this is kind of a simple year uh, because that's all that's on the ballot. In the past, we've had multiple propositions and that sometimes is a little bit more confusing. Uh, and sending it out to 10,000 plus of uh, Potential voters is another <laughs> unknown. So we're just uh, working through the process. And again, you know, kudos to to uh, to Jackie and Sue uh, for making this process as smooth as possible. They've really done a fantastic job, and um, and and we're really hopeful that the process is going to work as well as it possibly can. And so what's next? Um, so uh, we were in it. So no news, like it says, anticipated state aid reduction. We thought it was going to come in on the 15th. We're, we don't know when that will happen. We are, I guess, I wouldn't say hoping, but we are expecting something this month. Then there'll be another reduction, possibly on June 30th, and then again on December 31st. Um, this is something that we've never faced before. This is new, where the legislature has given the governor 
um, I guess, the authority to to make these adjustments in midstream. And that's due to the uncertainty of what they are facing currently. Um, I know that um, it's um, the the deficit is in, in the many billions, I think in excess of 10 billion. Uh, and so they're really hoping for some significant relief through this the next federal um, relief package. Uh, so we're hoping that will come our way because certainly um, East Aurora has been impacted. Uh, I mean, East Aurora, excuse me, New York State has been impacted greater than any other state in the country. And so we're really hoping that we get some relief uh, and then that will be uh, equally distributed to education. Um, so we look forward uh, again, the uh, May 12th was the deadline for the first two publications, which we, again, Jackie and Sue took care of and made sure that they were, they were out appropriately. Um, May 19th uh, through the 26th, uh, we we're gonna make the budget available to the public. Uh, May 21st is the deadline for adopting the budget. Uh, May 22nd is the property tax uh, report card is due. And then May 26th through June 2nd, the re, uh, remote budget hearing, uh, which will actually happen on, on June 2nd, on Tuesday, June 2nd, the hearing will, the public hearing will take place. Um, uh, June 3rd is the deadline for mailing of the budget notice. And then we're um, mailing of absentee ballots. We weren't sure, but we're hoping uh, by the end of this week, the absentee ballots will be in the mail and on their way. And then we have the budget vote on Tuesday, June 9th. So yeah. just back up, can we yeah. back up to that slide? Um, we're going to have a, a budget hearing on June 2nd. Yes. Right. Yep. So I, I need everyone to put that on there. Yep. Um, Jackie uh, will be sending, um, we'll be sending, we'll be sending a, a notice of that meeting shortly. Can we, can we have a finance committee before or we'll not that be able? Sure. Yep. Great. Um, I just, I have a question just sort of of the timing of this. I'm a little concerned because we just had the discussion that everything must be received by June 9th. So if I'm reading this correctly, we're mailing it on June 3rd, correct? No, no, that's just the, uh, the budget notice came as the challenger. So all okay. the information that okay. goes to the challenger will be delivered that day. We're right. actually going to be mailing the ballots out. Um, it, it, I, they're hoping on Thursday, but. Oh, okay. That's what we were talking about. Okay. That's what I was. So we're within the within that time frame that they suggested that we prepare and get the ballots out. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Because I was when I saw deadline for mailing the, the budget notice. Okay. All right. So I just need folks to calendar a meeting for Tuesday, June second. Right. And then also um, anticipate a meeting June tenth or June eleventh yeah. once we get the budget. Um, tabulation the votes back from the Erie County Board of Elections. Correct. Yes, exactly, Mary Beth. So, uh, you know, we're hoping that um, the, the vote is on Tuesday the 9th, and we're hoping that, you know, either they'll be able to take our ballots on, on, the, on the 10th or the 11th, something like that. Yeah, we're, we have a, a board mm -hmm. meeting that we had already scheduled for June 10th. So why don't we leave it on for the 10th for now? And then if, if for some reason that can't happen, we'll reschedule it to the yeah. 11th. Yep. That sounds great. Yeah. So the, the meeting on the hearing should be uh, the budget meeting. I mean, excuse me, um, the board meeting on the, the second should be fairly short because it'll just be related to the hearing. Right. Yeah. We won't plan on anything else in that meeting and we didn't have any reports uh, so as I think back we had talked about having maybe the counseling center come in and give us a report um, in this spring I, I think we could probably push that to early fall um, did we have anything else scheduled for um, curriculum reports or anything throughout the spring that we haven't haven't covered Mark do you, do you know that uh, I'll not curriculum reports. I'll, I do have a calendar. I don't have it with me. I will look at it. Nothing comes to mind of, of essential. Um, obviously, it's good information for the board to have, but um, I, will let, I will let you know on that. Um, we have a running file of reports that we do, so I'll look at that. Let me just ask, does any board member have any questions about the slide presentation? We can come off that if, if that's done. Yes, please. I, Mr. Brunson? Yeah, Terry also. Terry, go ahead first. 
My question was just at the last meeting, we talked about possibly having, um, Brian, you present to some of the outside groups, Kiwanis, um, senior citizens, Is that plan still in place. Um, yeah, Terry, we just spoke about it today about, um, recording and maybe even this using this presentation and, and just, you know, putting it out to those groups that it's available. Um, I, I, yeah, again, it's um, when I go in, that's basically what I do is I do um, the budget presentation, the proposed budget presentation. Sometimes I do give them a little additional. We, we pulled a lot off to try to keep this as, as simple and as straightforward as possible um, because sometimes all the other information gets a little overwhelming. Uh, so we're just trying to decide on what that presentation will look like and, and we'll be pushing that out so it's available to them. Yes. Probably, Brian, the only thing I would add in terms of any slides is is what this budget includes or what it doesn't include, you know, yeah. Um, um, yeah. which I think it, it right now doesn't include really, it's kind of status quo, right, with a few yeah. minor tweaks. Right. It, 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 yeah, exactly. It's, um, there's, there's not a, a lot that's included because we, we've backed off, um, because of the, the pandemic and its in, impact on the state. So we're just kind of waiting ourselves and waiting it out and, and seeing um, what we can, what we will be able to do. And I think so, that probably just needs a slide in there that says yeah, that. Sure. That's a good idea. Yes. You, could, you could potentially include what's on the wish list that has been put back on hold. Yes, right. What we were like, the, like the letter we got about tonight about the, the, the class sizes, you right. know, the, you know, just those things that were, uh, social worker, those things that were on there that we. Yeah. And Brian, uh, as we talked about reaching out to the community, as Terry mentioned, um, the community, the, com the communication subcommittee meeting is tomorrow morning. Have you gotten good feedback from folks that they plan to attend that one from the community groups? Mm -hmm. I, I did check with Sue. There were eight people that were attending and then she sent out another reminder and I don't know what the attendance is after that. If we're done on the slideshow, can we just... I, I had one more thing. Thank you, Dan. I'm sorry. We forgot about you. No, that's all right. Uh, can, can we back up to the expenditure slide, please? The, the only question I have for you, again, relates to class sizes. And I, I just want to be sure that we're not moving backwards here. Uh, the, the, uh, the budget, as it is presented, uh, assumes the original intent of the state to provide a certain amount of financing and the, our and our uh, intent to uh, increase taxes to accommodate certain additional costs that we know exist. I just want to be sure that there is enough in that salary line of um, uh, $16,289,277 to accommodate keeping our class sizes at the levels they have been last year. Yeah, Dan, the, the, only, um, the only issue that we were still dealing with is um, we, needed, we need to hire um, an additional elementary teacher. That, that's what's on hold. That's what I said is like our, our top priority once we hear from the governor in terms of what our numbers look like. It's, it, it is our hope to still be able to do that but if if the the decreases are are dramatic, I, I don't know exactly what that will look like. So I guess to Dan's point though, Brian, there's money in there in unallocated funds. Yes. That if the things were the status quo, right. the expectation would be that there's money in this budget. That that we're not we're not at we're not at elevated class sizes under this budget if that happens because of the whatever state aid cuts come yes. so be it but the money that's allocated in this but that's that there's at least money in the budget whether it's specifically allocated or in a non-allocated fte fund that that will allow us to hire and keep class sizes the same that's correct if, if say for instance we get no reduction then it, it, we would be able to hire that teacher to maintain that class size and that that's the only area that's affected Everything else is like you're saying, status quo. So the, the number of sections will be maintained uh, pretty much every, in every other area uh, across the board, if I'm thinking correctly. 
Does that answer your question, Mr. Well, Wayne? yes. I, I just like to reiterate that you know, from my point of view, what it actually means to me, and that is what, if when I vote yes for this budget proposal today, I'm voting for an amount of money allocated to allow for that additional fourth grade teacher, that yeah. the money is in there to do that. And, and to only if later on down the road we see some other issue come up relating to our uh, revenues that we might have to readdress this issue when that time came. And I would continue to argue in favor at that time of finding somewhere else to get the money to uh, to be able to do this. So I, I just want to be sure I'm voting yes on a on a budget that permits us to hire this additional teacher and keep those class sizes at the level that we were able to bring them to uh, a year or two ago. And when we asked over and over again, was this sustainable? Could we keep this going or are we going down a road that we can't sustain? It, we, it, it was sustainable then, I believe it is sustainable now. And I'm glad to hear that there's enough money in the budget to be able to do it. So I intend to vote yes. Can we come off the slides if everybody's done with the slides themselves and we can uh, do the budget? Yeah, do you know that, that, Kim? yeah, just one about the timeline again, just going back to that June 2nd, I think it was, it said June 2nd that you're doing the press or yeah, the remote, yeah, hearing. The remote budget here. That's, yeah. that's the one for the community, correct? Is that what that is? Yeah, okay. it, yeah, it's a public hearing, right, Kim? Right. And then after that, is that when you're talking about reaching out to Kiwanis and the community members based on that information? No, I'll be okay. I'll be sending it based on this information. Okay. This, okay. This, would be, this would be the time that I would be meeting with them um, after we, we typically it's when we have the proposed budget then I take it to them uh, in between this and our budget vote Okay. <laughs> yeah, to share that information with them. Right. The reason I, the reason I bring it up is I just want to make sure because there's not a lot of time after that June 3rd date or whatever it was. I don't know what it is now, June 2nd, June 3rd um, and June 9th. If the deadline is five o'clock on June 9th, right. Because right. you don't have, you have a weekend in there and you know, just making sure that people are out voting. That's it's know, one week. June second is right. our right. June June June. hearing, and the ballots are due the following Tuesday. Yeah, right. And those are statutory requirements. That that's in regulation. Those All are the, the new timelines, timelines, though, as a Correct. result of the change. And right. that's the the governor set for the and just the calendar, and, right? Mm -hmm. I just Brian this one here this I believe we covered this this is just the one slide you didn't get to but I it just shows an update I think yeah. it's basically we covered it in the last one and then after that um, we can pull it down unless there's more slide questions anything nope nope we can pull okay. it down okay great are there any other questions for Brian on the budget I would say my only other question would be, are we going to know the outcome of this year's <clears throat> financials prior to her to June 2nd? So Joanne, will you have a great idea of, of what we're going to collect in the state aid or will it be collected? And will all other, all other expense items be known for, for this, for this school year, not for next school year. For this school year, we won't know the final revenues until June 30th. Our state aid comes in on June 30th, and our sales tax comes in on June 30th. I'll be able to give you an update to that point in time, but it won't be the final, no. Okay, so when we have a finance committee meeting before, you can just explain, here's where we're at, and here's where the question marks are? Correct. Perfect. Anyone else have questions on the budget? Yeah, Brian, I do. Um, this how we're voting this year is very different from how it's, people have voted in the past because everyone has to do it through through the mail through absentee ballots. Um, and if this budget does not pass, then our class sizes obviously would go up. There'd be a lot of cuts. Um, I just want to make sure that the public is aware of that as well. The ramifications of a no budget is going to be really hard on our students. Um, Terry, I can, I can address that at this point in time, um, there is no second vote. Normally we have a second vote. The change in the vote date did not include a second vote. 
So unless we get new information, it's my assumption that we would have to go to a contingent vote and we cannot um, increase the tax levy at all. And that amounts to another 1.1 some million dollars um, that would have to be reduced. Which and is, that equates to about 15 FTEs. Well, which is a really big class sizes and a lot of things cut out of the out of the correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that would be yeah, it would be significant. Um, it would be 10 percent of our staff. In addition, probably uh, beyond that, other cuts that we would have to make to the budget. Uh, to, to make that that happen. Uh, as Joanne said, like usually there's a revote, um, but we haven't been given a date this year. So right now there isn't one. Um, is it going to be different? I don't know. But yeah, so so if the budget doesn't pass, the, the impact would be very, very, very significant. Yes. Uh, Br Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but I was under the impression that if the budget didn't pass that that the rule was that you could not uh, increase expenditures. In other words, you had to have the same expenditure level in the in the uh, new year that you had in the previous year. Is that incorrect? Is it that you can only not increase taxes? Um, there are certain expenditures that need to be excluded, um, such as equipment. Um, but the big caveat after the tax cap law came into place is that you cannot raise a dollar on the levy. All right. So the so the loss uh, would be the the difference between this year's projected tax uh, levy and next year's. Yes. Correct. The levy increase. So so we would lose the and that's the one point one million you were talking about. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. yeah. Thank you. And this just because uh, I don't know if it was on the slide, but this is a tax cap compliant budget. Yes, it is. Yeah, this is not. A, we're trying to exceed the cap. This is. This is the this is that's the formula that Joanne calculates for us. Uh, so we are within the tax cap limit, not going over the cap at all. Um, but that's I think that's the one thing, Dan, is that if it goes down, that all the money that's raised through the levy is then no longer available to us, and that's that one point one million, which would would have a I mean, honestly a devastating impact on on our programs. It used to be the other way, Dan, but that when that cap formula came in and they implemented that. It used to be the contingency was you stayed status quo and yes. yeah. kept, kept stuff in, but now it now it's not. Right. I'm I'm living in the past a little bit, I'm afraid. <laughs> we appreciate your historical perspective. Well, thanks for thanks for keeping me up to date. Good old days, man. Good old days. Uh, all right, any other questions on the budget? All right. Um, we have a short, uh, well, I, there are no items for board discussion. Uh, I think we've had enough legislation with this new voting scenario. No other legislation though, right, Brian? Um, no, not, not, no, not that I can think of. I mean, it's just like you said, all the changes that the governor puts out and that's every day's different. So right, right. nothing new that we haven't discussed, I don't believe. We have a short consensus agenda this evening. Is there anyone who wishes to remove uh, an item for separate discussion? All right. Hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the consensus agenda? So moved. So moved. Second. Moved by Dan, seconded by... Second by John. I know somebody else heard, beat him to it, but I didn't see who it was. Moved by Dan, seconded by John Segetti. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carried 7-0. We have a few items requiring board action. Uh, item A, the superintendent rec recommends the Board of Education accept the resignation of Lindsay to James, part-time school nurse, effective May 4th of 2020. May I have a motion? So moved. <clears throat> so by Judy, seconded by John. Discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye, aye. Aye. Seven zero. Item B, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education adopt the 2020-21 proposed general fund budget. Oh, I got to get the amount. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't write it. Pod. It's, can, um, can, it, can someone read it to me? 38,171,727 dollars. All right, let me start that one over then. Uh, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education adopt the 2020-21 proposed general fund budget in the amount of $38,178,171,727 and the property tax report card as detailed in your attachment. So moved. moved by Jessica, second? Uh, second. That was just seconding Terry moving, I believe. Oh, I Sorry. <laughs> no problem. I'm on the agenda, not on the meeting. Uh, okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Carried seven zero. Item C, uh, the superintendent recommends the Board of Education approve for a first reading board policy 5676, which is privacy and security for student data and teacher principal data. May I have a motion? So moved. Move. Second. Terry and John. Moved by Terry, seconded by John. Discussion. Mr. Membretti, can you fill folks in on what this, why this is on tonight? Yep. Uh, basically, this is the policy um, component to Ed Law 2D, which is a sweeping new student data privacy law that has a number of impacts of how we manage um, who has access to student data privacy. Um, and any outside software, um, whether it's web-based or something we install or anything that has personally identified information of our students. Um, and uh, the state has, has made a very, very concerted effort of protecting student data privacy. And what this is, it sets the guidelines for, for us to be able to share any, um, any personally identifiable information of our students with any third-party software um, at all, however that's uh, they need to agree to a number of terms um, that are laid out by the state um, and that it's our responsibility to make sure that we have that vendor sign a contract with us or we could buy it through BOCES who will make that contract be signed. So um, a little of this is it, it's an, it is what it is policy to bring us in compliance with the law, um, but what it means for our daily practices, um, it's a, it's, we are uh, working to ensure student data privacy um, via uh, any electronic uh, measure to save or transmit anything that identifies our students. Are we so, compliant with that right now? Uh, so we're going to have a it, second reading on this in a couple of, you know, their next. Yeah, we're, we're, so are we compliant with what we're passing as policy now? We're working towards it. All districts are. Uh, July 1st is when it comes into the policy needs to be in by July 1st, as well as we're not allowed to use any software after July 1st that is not compliant. We have a process of reviewing all our software. Um, we know what we buy from BOCES. We're reviewing everything that we don't buy from BOCES. And if we, we are then pursuing a contract if we don't have one. And if we cannot get that contract in time, we have to shut it off as of July 1st. We know what those items are. Um, and then hopefully over the summer, we'll scramble and get this going. At the same time, we're communicating with our teachers. So there will be hopefully none. Um, surprises in September of we're legally not allowed to support that anymore. But the vendors are under great motivation to sign this because if they want to operate at all in New York State, which is a large state with lots of students, they need to agree to this contract. Um, the way the state has set it up, though, is they need to agree to it with every individual district as opposed to a central clearinghouse, which is a logistical <laughs> frustration. Um, but basically, seven hundred the vendors... <laughs> Yeah, or, or through a BOCES, but the vendors are highly motivated to make sure that they're safeguarding our data. Um, so it's pretty much just a logistical pain at this point. Uh, Dan, I know you had a question too. Well, I just uh, wondered how much of this is new. Uh, the the uh, uh, there were uh, there were some highlighted paragraphs in the um, in the attachment that I received that is, it made it look like there were only two or three uh, changes. Uh, was I reading it wrong? No, the policy is new. What you saw was highlighted was we had some flexibility in that policy and Rich uh, worked very hard and also with Dennis and with Marnie Smith to make sure the policy reflects 
um, both the law and our practice. So, oh, all right. So, so the part that was highlighted was what differentiates East Aurora, uh, but the, the entire 13 page policy is brand new. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. The highlighted is how we've changed it from the BOCES uh, template policy. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Seven zero. So our next board meeting is June second. Um, we don't anticipate Brian an executive session for that. Um, um, no. no um, may, I, may I uh, suggest that there are a number of things we usually do in executive session in the month of June. Uh, in preparation for uh, making decisions about uh, salaries and uh, uh, and issues relating to particular contracts uh, that are are discussed in executive session, uh, have we taken care of all that business and we're ready to go July one with with uh, appropriate adjustments? So I think Dan, um, my suggestion is we're going to take a look at that stuff and see whether there's a need for that right now. We have it in for a seven o'clock meeting. If we need to have an executive session, we'll add it on. All right. That's fine. Just as long as we somehow or another don't lose track of, of the decisions we have to make uh, regarding uh, salary adjustments for the new fiscal year. Right. Right. And we ordinarily also start the superintendent's evaluation sometime in May and get it done sometime in March, but, um, <laughs> well, yeah, I think we had a, some kind of a, an arrangement where we were going to adjust that calendar okay. a little bit. Yeah. I, I, I think we've adjusted it and we're not doing it in June, but um, <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to the superintendent and make sure he's okay with that. <laughs> uh, Mr. Leibrock, we loved to see your addition, so thank you for that. That was lovely. I'd like to request babies at all future policy discussions. That <laughs> <laughs> had to step out and put her down for bed. No, it does. It, it, we enjoy seeing it. So thank you. Yeah. For that. Um, does anyone have anything else this evening? Nope. So let me just thank everyone again for a, a good meeting and we will see you on the second. Everybody stay safe. Thank you all for your hard work and see you soon. Thank you, Mary Beth. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.